Number 1. The Room When I first got out of high school, my relationship with my parents had already been deteriorating quite a bit. It really only got worse afterwards. I had those sort of parents who wanted you out of the house when you hit 18. But of course, since I decided not to go to college, I needed to get a job and save up money to get my own place to live. Due to that, I had to be at home for a while after I graduated. I remember that winter for a lot of things. Most of my friends had gone off to college in the fall, so I really didn't have anyone to hang out with. I spent most of my time working and the rest of the time in my room at home. It was cozy, but it wasn't cozy outside. Hell, it was kind of wet and slushy a lot. We hadn't yet had any sticking snow, and whatever slush we had was kept going by constant supply of more slush. I didn't have a car, and I hadn't intended on getting one. Although I lived in the burbs, I figured when I did get my own place, it would be in the city. So there was no point in getting a car with all the buses and trains that were available in the city. I began looking at apartments and rooms to rent. And when I went in the city to look at them, I would generally have to be there in the city all day. I had done this several times and was having a hard time finding a place. There were some nice studios in the city, but they expected me to pass a credit check. I really didn't understand at the time that they were just checking to make sure that I had no evictions. I didn't have any credit cards, and then I automatically thought that meant I would fail a credit check. Sort of makes me think I would have been better off going to college. So I became more interested in searching for rooms instead. I recall this one day that I was searching, and I had a really freaky experience. I was taking buses, and I recall getting off a train when I had to walk to an appointment to see a room. It was dark, cold, and slushy by that point. When I got off the train, I did find the house, but I was there quite early. It was a really late appointment, so I stopped off at a local McDonald's to have something to eat. It's odd how lonely I felt when I was there. I was eating by myself, in a city that I nearly knew no one in, and they were playing O Tannenbaum, while I had a fish fillet and an eggnog shake. Afterward, it was closer to the time of my appointment, so I headed out to the house. The neighborhood of the city there was not one I was familiar with. In many ways, the area was more like the suburbs than the city. The house was pretty dark, and when I walked up to it, I almost wondered if anyone was home. However, only moments after walking up to the door and knocking, it was answered. I don't remember the man's name, but I do remember feeling uneasy about him from the moment I met him. He was tall and thin. His eyes were sort of red, and they rested in dark sockets in his face, and his smile made me uneasy. The man urged me into the house quite quickly. It was a decent place. It had hardwood floors in it, even though they looked pretty old. He didn't have any lights on, and didn't turn any on. There were some of those kerosene lamps with the colored fuel in them that was popular for a very long time, but none of them were on very bright. Without really getting me to talk to him first, he began to immediately usher me up the dark stairway to the second floor. He had one of those lamps on a stand at the top of the stairs. He was talking to me very quickly as he led me to a door at the end of the hall. He actually had a padlock on it. He took out a key, opened the lock, and opened the door. And there was another one of those lamps sitting in the room. This would be your room, he told me. Feel free to go in and take a look. I reached for a light switch, but he blocked me. He told me that he didn't like bright lights, and would prefer I check the room out by the light of the lamp. He kept urging me to go into the room, but by that point I was so off-put and uncomfortable that I didn't want to go into the room. I got this weird idea into my head that if I did, he would close it and then lock me in. No, the room looks fine, I told him. He nudged me to go in, but I still wouldn't. At that point, I just wanted to get the hell out of there. Oh, so will you be taking it? he asked. 
Again, this was really creepy. He wasn't asking me anything about myself at all. He told me nothing about himself, but he seemed like he wanted me to go into that room. Well, I have it narrowed down to a couple rooms that I like, I told him. I'll let you know. And that was when he said the creepiest thing of all. You can sleep in there tonight if you want to take time to decide. It was too much at that point. I just babbled something about him not being my last appointment and that I had to leave. I then pushed past him and quickly down the steps and out the door. I looked back and he was standing at the door looking for me. He did not pursue me though. I suppose it is possible that the guy was just weird and not intending to do me any harm. But at the same time, it definitely did not seem like that. I have every so often wondered if he would have closed that door behind me and put that padlock on it. Number 2. Drift I work from home, which is pretty important to the telling of this story. I don't have hours that I have to work. I get paid by how much work I get done. And I can do as much or as little work as I want to. It's always been a great way to work, in my view. I make an extremely decent living. Plus, I can decide what I want to do on a daily basis. If it's a beautiful spring day outside and I do not feel like working, then I don't have to work. I can go outside and go for a walk. It's a great way to live. But even though this is the case, I actually do a lot of work. I do at least some amount of work every day. It is sort of just how I am. If I don't do some work all the time, I begin to feel like I am unaccomplished. It's sort of a really empty feeling that I just don't like. So it can be really difficult for me to ever take a full day off. Now I remember how it all started. I got up after sleeping in really late. It seemed a little dark outside for the time of day it was. When I looked out I saw all sorts of dark clouds covering the skies. When I got onto my computer and checked the weather report, which was not something I did very often, there was a blizzard warning, and it was supposed to be a really bad one. It was going to be snow for days, and it would be several feet on the ground. I really didn't have anywhere to go, so I just thought I'd enjoy the weather. It began snowing in the mid-afternoon. It started off slow, and then it began to get very thick. My computer was in the living room, and I was able to watch the storm through the sliding glass door to my balcony. There was also a light out there, and after a while, it was the only thing that I was able to see outside. Well, that and the snow that was falling down in front of it. The snow began quickly piling up on my balcony, which also meant that it was also doing that on the ground. It didn't take long before I wouldn't be able to open my balcony door either. And by the time I went to bed that night, it was quite clear that whenever I woke up, I was going to be trapped in my apartment building. Like I mentioned before, this was not going to be a big deal for me. I kept myself holed up in my fourth floor apartment for weeks at a time, even when there was no snow. By the next afternoon, it was amazing when I woke up and got a look. It was still snowing from what I could see, but I couldn't really see much. Almost the entire balcony door was completely covered in snow. I was waiting for the inevitable wind that would be coming once the storm was over. And when it came, it did not disappoint. It howled all late afternoon and all night. Talking to a few friends of mine that live locally and were on the internet, they told me that their vehicles were completely covered in snow. And honestly, it lasted for quite a while. Plows were even snowed in, so they had to be shoveled or snow blowed out, and that took time. I had friends who missed up to five days of work due to how deep the snow had gotten. Even I began to get cabin fever, and that might be because even though I spend a lot of time indoors, I always have the option of going outside if I need to. Now it was taken away from me, and I didn't care for that very much. One thing that made it even worse was that when the plows finally came, through the parking lot of the apartment, they simply heaped even more snow over the cars. The apartment building did not shovel out anyone's cars for them, 
so we had to do it ourselves. Not only that, but we also had to wait for the snow to go down a little from being salted, because it was so stacked up. When I finally felt that I had a chance, I did go out to shovel my car out. It was pretty grueling work. When I finally had a bit of it uncovered, I noticed something pretty shocking. One of my windows had been broken out. Snow had begun to fill my car, although it wasn't filled up. As I continued to undo the snow and be able to see in the car better, I nearly had a heart attack. There was someone in the back seat of my car. I began trying to talk to him and everything, but he was non-responsive. I called the police immediately as I continued to shovel. They arrived and took over when they did. It turns out the man had broken into my car on the night of the blizzard. It was likely that he was homeless and just needed a place to sleep. He probably saw that I had blankets in the back seat of my car because I keep them there on purpose in case I go to a club or something and I get tired. He maybe didn't know the snowfall was going to become a blizzard and he got locked in and died. Number 3. The Gym I value my alone time. I'm a female, which is very important to know. I live in a little town by Madison, Wisconsin called Verona. I shared a home with someone, and I spent most of my time in my room. I also am not so big on holidays like Christmas, so I didn't go to visit family on Christmas. In fact, my plan was to go to the local gym that I had a membership to and work out on Christmas night. I just really thought going to the gym on Christmas night would afford me some privacy. It was snowing on Christmas that year, and snow around Madison, Wisconsin is quite thick and heavy, and this night was no exception. As I was going to the gym, I really thought that I was going to have the whole place to myself. Now, I'm not going to mention the name of the gym, but it is open 24 hours, but it doesn't have a 24-hour staff. Every member has a key card that allows you to get in after hours. When I arrived at the gym, there was only one car in the parking lot other than me. It had a bit of snow gathered up on it, so I assumed the person had been in there for quite a while. I hoped that meant they wouldn't be there much longer. I went to do my cardio on an elliptical machine. The guy who was in there was exercising on a bike, and I could tell that he was watching me in one of the mirrors that I was reflected in. It absolutely made me uncomfortable, but that wasn't as bad as when he got up off the exercise bike, didn't wipe it down, and moved over to an elliptical that was only a few feet away from me. There were rows and rows of elliptical machines, and he had to move close to me, and he had to keep looking at me a lot while I was working out. The discomfort was ruining the entire thing for me. I assumed that me ignoring him would give him the idea that I was not interested. It didn't stop. He followed me around the gym. He never spoke to me, though. He just kept staring and following. He really completely ruined the experience for me. I decided to leave the gym early. I went to the locker room to take a shower. This gym had individual shower stalls, which was one of the reasons that I went to it. So I went in and I was taking a shower. I almost jumped, however, when I turned and saw a shadow through the shower curtain. It was that guy. It had to be. He had not only been following me all night, but now he had come into the women's locker room and was standing outside of my shower stall. I didn't know what to do, but I was really scared. I decided the best thing would be to not let on that I knew he was there. I mean, he was bigger than I was, and if he wanted to overpower me, I have no doubt it would have been easy for him to do. I did grab my shampoo bottle, though, and was prepared to squirt it in the guy's eyes if he opened the shower curtain. A few moments passed. He didn't open the curtain. He did, however, eventually walk away. I quickly rinsed myself off. I crept out of the shower and inspected the locker room to make sure the man was gone. And he was. I dried off got my things and prepared to hightail it out of the gym. However, I stopped upon leaving the locker room. I saw he was still there, sitting in the lobby of the gym. He hadn't seen me, though, 
so I was able to duck back in. I had had enough. I called the police on my cell phone and explained what was happening. They sent someone out. When they arrived, I noticed them talking to the man. They led him out of the gym into his car. I didn't come out until the guy left. The whole thing was creepy, but fortunately the man entering the woman's locker room was caught on a security camera. He was removed as a member of the gym, and I never saw him again, thank God. Hey all, Killer Orange Cat here. I'm about to go into my normal spiel, but first wanted to let everyone know that I will be doing my stream this week on Saturday at 9pm Central. I plan on discussing my views of the movie Candyman, and if anyone wants to join me, please let me know. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, feel free to click on the subscribe button below and click on the bell for notifications. Or you can click on the icon of Ichigo the Cat that will appear at the end of this closing. Leave me a comment and share with someone you think might enjoy it. If you have an original story you want narrated on Killer Orange Cat, please email it to the address included in the description. Most importantly, don't forget to make sure to check in your closet. Check under your bed, because you never know where Killer Orange Cat might be hiding. Good night.